enjoy your life and enjoy the process. Because if I'm attached to that outcome, I'm going to have a heart attack if I screw up. What is your method? How do we get out of perfectionism? It's only a problem if I make it a problem. Nothing perfect ever gets out. It's always something that's good enough. <laughs> How you doing, Tracy? I'm doing well. How are you doing in the rain out here? Uh, it's, yeah, unexpected. So for my audience, I may not be as familiar with what you're doing. What's, what's the quick intro into what you're all about? Well, I'm a behavioral relationship expert. And so I work with people, specifically perfectionists, who drive themselves crazy with all sorts of patterns that make them unhappy, both professionally and personally. So, so, and you work with a lot of entrepreneurs in that in that yeah. process too. Yeah. Okay. What is what is your method? How do we get out of perfectionism? Like, it's one of the biggest things that I see with all these entrepreneurs that I meet on my tour and in comments. Just, I want it to be perfect. I can't release my plan yet. I can't release my product yet, and they just don't take action. Well, what is your advice? It, well, I was gonna say a lot of it has to do with how you actually feel about yourself. It okay. is a self-worth question because mm. if I feel okay and I know that what I put out there is good enough, I'm going to go with it because it's not about it being perfect. Nothing perfect ever gets out. It's always something that's good enough. But as an entrepreneur, you know, you can work and work and work and think, oh my God, if I don't get this perfect, then I'm not going to be able to sell it. Nobody's going to want to buy it. And it's just not true. But it, is, it has to really do with how you look at things. And you were asking my method. And my method is I work with people in their belief system. And through the beliefs that you have, which we all have negative beliefs, of course, some of us don't have any kind of awareness that they're going on underneath what we do. But, but these are at the bottom of it, right? They're at the bottom of the motivation. And so I work with the belief system and the patterns that support it to get people to stop being in you know in this mode of perfectionism and all the patterns that come with it what's the most common belief system that you need to alter for people that prevents them from moving forward that you're actually okay that you're okay see when you don't think you're okay you happen to have all of these different things that you do to <laughs> keep showing everybody no i'm really okay i need validation over here you got to tell me i'm okay and so that sets you up for not having any kind of confidence in what you do. It sets you up to, to be a punching bag for other people, especially if they don't like what you do. Then you went to that drawing board, you know, a bunch of different times going, oh, I got to please this person. I got to please that person. Because you turn into a huge people pleaser when you have that as part of your characteristics in being a perfection. So how do I uncover what my limiting pattern is? Well, you can basically tell, number one, by how you feel. So, okay. okay, so a lot of times people say, well, I don't know how I feel. You can tell if you're doing something where you're putting over effort, like more than enough effort, you feel tired, you feel heavy, you feel like you're angry even. You can feel you know, angry at people, angry at yourself. These are ways to tell that you have gone way over and above what you needed to do in the first place. Hmm. So let me give you two of mine, and then you could tell me uh, what I need to do and, and hopefully inspire the audience watching too. So my biggest uh, insecurity or doubt or fear is of disappointing people, which is part of why I'm on this tour is because I get the chance every four days to get up in front of a room and potentially disappoint people again. So the, the positive side of it is I over deliver like crazy because I care so much about it that I want to make sure that, that people get value. Right. But, but, but the fear is still there that um, I'm going to disappoint somebody. They're not going to get value from this. Um, I don't want people wasting their money. Uh, so, so if that's my issue coming, well, that is my issue coming in. What do I do next? How do you help me? Well, first of all, I got to ask you, why is it that you feel you need to please everybody? Because, and I ask this with the caveat of, it's not that you should go in with the attitude, I'm going to do a crappy job. It's, right. I'm going to go in and I'm going to be me and I'm going to deliver the best I can. So why is it that there's an expectation that everybody's going to be pleased? Because as you know, you can't please everybody, 
right? Right. So um, I don't know. Uh, I, I maybe it's maybe it's just human nature. Maybe it's I have it to a, a bigger degree of uh, I I know rationally that you're not going to please everybody. But if somebody leaves the room or if somebody isn't happy, I'll focus more on that person and, and like try to win them back than the person who's like super into it and like, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Right. Well, and there's a couple things with that. One is if I need somebody to do that, that's a sense of me needing the validation from them that I'm okay. Okay. The other is, of course, as an entrepreneur and in your business, you want to make sure that you are delivering things that are valuable to people. So, of course, there's an interest and there should be an interest, but not a personal, oh, my God, I'm going to feel so bad connected to it. You know, it's more about, well, what what do they have to say about it? Do they have something that's valuable to me in my business that I can take into my business and, you know, consider maybe I'll do that next time or, or whatever that happens to be. So it depends on where you're going with it. So is my strategy then to start off my workshop, for example? I got one coming up in L.A. in two days. Do I go in saying, I'm okay, I'm great, reminding myself of all the work that I do and how amazing I am? Is it if I if somebody, like, gets up and says, you suck, or walks out of the room, which has never happened, but, like, <laughs> if it does, uh, you know, worst-case scenario, is it is it – is it that reminder mechanism? Like, what are the what are the strategies that I should be using, either in the event itself or as preparation leading up to it, so that uh, I'm I'm best capable of handling it? Okay, so so the deal is, if I were in your shoes, I would want to be as resilient as possible. I yeah. wouldn't go going. I'm so amazing. Like, I never say that. I never okay. ever talk about that. Okay. Okay. I say I'm okay. I'm fine. You know okay. what? I'm, I even go. I might screw up. But I, I'm not attached to that outcome. Because if I'm attached to that outcome, I'm going to have a heart attack if I screw up, right? I'm going to be so tied up in it going, oh, my God, I just screwed up. and Or somebody telling me that. It's that I have to be resilient enough to handle any kind of disappointment emotionally. Because that's how life works. So if I'm doing that, then I'm going to feel better. Because that's the only control I really do have is my own feelings. Sure, I want to make the best show I can possibly do. But again, I'm not going to go out there and pretend I'm something I'm not. I have to be as authentic as I can be. And that means wearing it all up. Because like you, I'm in that, that same boat. Of, I don't try and make myself sound better than I am. I go out there and I say, this is me, and this is what I do, and this is how I can help you. Okay. Interesting. M my approach has been um, I love the attachment of self-worth to the effort, not the result that I'm trying. Like I'm, I'm, I am awesome. I'll tell myself I'm awesome all the time for trying, even if I suck at the skill. So it doesn't mean I suck as a human, but I suck at the skill of getting the result. But as a human, I'm awesome because I'm trying. And so that'll be, if somebody actually, like nobody's ever got up and left, but that would probably be my instinct that if somebody got up and like said, you suck and then left, I would, I would find some way in my head to tell myself I'm awesome for being here and trying and I'm going to still do my best to make this a great event. Is that right? Is, 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 and is what you're saying to say, don't say that you're awesome and say, this is okay. I'm okay. Is that what you would do? I, I would do that only be, and it's the same thing because you're saying you're awesome. So maybe that's the word that works for you, but it's really okay. about what you said before that, which is about taking it personally. So okay. you have to, you know, I'm looking at this from the belief and patterns, right? Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is where people do take things personally. And that's why I'm saying you have to be resilient and you have to know you're okay. And like you're saying, for trying, for showing up, for breathing, you are okay or you're amazing or whatever you want to call yourself. But that's mm. not taking it personally. That's saying I'm okay, even if right. somebody doesn't like me. So it's two different things. It just depends on where somebody's self-worth is. If your self-worth is all tied up in what you're doing out here and it's not inside of you, right. then that's the problem. That's where most perfectionists are. It's that they're trying to get some kind of validation outside of themselves that they can't give themselves inside. Mm. I think it's easy to instinctively respond and, and be upset about not having validation, but then 
at least for me, then use logic to try to, try to bring me back. Like if somebody got up and said, you suck, well, in, for the next eight seconds, that's going to really hurt and be like, oh my God, what do I do? And then the brain will, will kick in and say, uh, okay, no, you're, you're okay or you're awesome. Like you, you, we'll figure this out. This is the best. You could be that, or you could even, you know, if somebody said that, like I did a live event in December, and if somebody would have said, you know what, Tracy, you suck, I might have sat there and gone, well, is there a part of me that thinks that what I just delivered sucked? I mean, right. that could be true, and it's okay. Right. See, this is the thing. It's only a problem if I make it a problem. Right. So I might just go, well, you know what, maybe you're right. Maybe that did suck. Maybe there's something there. But what happens is if I address it in that way, I forget about it. Like it just goes, poof out of there and I'm back to what I was focused on to begin with. But can you make that an automatic reaction? Because I think I would get there, but it would take me 10 to 15 seconds to get there where initially the instinct would be, this sucks that somebody just said that in front of this live audience and, and destroyed me. I would get there, but is there a way to train that as an instinct instead of a logical then reaction? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. I mean, that's the work that I do. I do it okay. at the level of changing patterns and your belief system. You know, it shifts your belief system when you start working at that level so okay. that you don't perceive things in the same way. Like, I rarely attach to an outcome. Rarely. Okay. It's all okay. about the doing. You mentioned about the doing. It's like, I get off on the doing. However it turns out, I don't have any control over that if I've done the best that I can do. Not over effort, like a perfectionist, like I used to be. I was a total perfectionist. And I'm not anymore. And the reason is because I have gone through, you know, working with my subconscious. And the way you work with your subconscious is the way that things get put into your subconscious to begin with. So you develop a belief because you have an emotional reaction to something as a kid. Because if you don't have an emotional reaction to something, it doesn't stick with you, right? It's like millions of things go by your reality every day that you, you see. A lot of things don't have any sort of a trigger or any, anything that makes you go, oh, wait a minute, wow. But when you have a wow or you have some kind of a negative reaction and you have it over and over again to something, you develop a belief. So mm. you have to work at that same level to get to those beliefs and do something about them, you know, to do something about the patterns that you have. And it's all about getting to that emotional part. So it's not logical, which is what most people want. You right. know? I, and I work with overachievers. I work with a lot of people that are logical. Yep. And, you know, and they're tired of making the same patterns over and over and they've tried to out logic themselves and then they can't. And, you know, it's just it's such a hard way to live when you're doing that versus when you start to really get down to your beliefs and your patterns and you can change them. Right. It makes it easier. Everything is easier. And so am I doing therapy? Am I doing affirmations, meditation, coaching? Like what's the process for you? of being able to change somebody's belief system? It's coaching. Um, it's at the level of emotions and it is at the level of who you are authentically before you were, mm. you went through all this conditioning as a kid, you know, we went through all this conditioning, right? And it wasn't all just in the home. It was pretty much everywhere you went added to your conditioning. So when you, you get beneath that and you get to the real person, um, it's, an emo it's emotional work. Of course, there's a mental aspect because your brain is involved. But right. it really is that, you know, I have things that are like releases and meditations and they can make an impact, but they're not what changes you permanently. It's really mm. taking emotionally risky action. And it's mm. that it has to be emotionally risky. Otherwise, if it's just risky, it doesn't stick. You want to break patterns. It has to be emotionally risky because you have to be able to feel it. So you're connected to your subconscious patterns because the subconscious patterns you have, most of them are protected by fear. You know, your subconscious is all about survival. And so it wants you to survive. And so a lot of patterns we have, we're afraid of touching them. We just keep doing the same thing over and over. Well, when you start to touch them and get into them and break them on a physical level, you change your life. You change your whole life. You don't carry around, you know, the perfectionism and all of the things that come with it. And things get easier. So, and that's been my experience. I mean, I'm only right. talking about... What, I, what I've done and what has worked with clients of mine too. So if I'm afraid of disappointing people and then here I am doing this tour where every four days I get in front of an audience and get the chance to disappoint people, every time I do it, it's becoming easier and not as scarier 
or uh, fearful, is that the kind of risky action you're talking about or should I be doing something else? I think for that particular, because your, your reason was to get out there and meet people face to face, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I know you said like on the interview we did that you're an introvert mostly. So yep. first of all, that is an emotionally risky action as an introvert to get out and be in front of a live audience when you'd rather be home doing whatever you do at home, right? right? So that's why it does get easier. And the more you do it, then it just becomes like second nature. And at some point, it'll be like second nature. You're not even going to think twice about it. And the reason is that aspect, and this isn't all across the board everywhere you go, but this has to do with this situation and you're doing it in this situation, then you are going to feel like, yeah, this is a piece of cake. I can totally do this. Do you, so this is very interesting for me. Do you, uh, do you have any idea or research or data or just your own thoughts and experience of how long that takes to stick? So I ask that because I've done a lot of speaking, a lot of speaking in front of bigger audiences and whenever I don't do speaking for a while, then I'll get nervous when I go on stage. But now that I'm doing it every four days, it goes away. I think back to my piano. There's some songs that I played so often on piano that I could still, 20 years later, remember how to play that song because it's like deeply ingrained in me. Even if I haven't touched the piano for two years, I could still pick it up and play that song. Is it just a matter of frequency? Is it... The, the emotion of like, after this tour of doing every four days and 23 stops, is that enough to cement it that then I'm never afraid again going up? Or what do you think? No, because here's the thing. It's not a linear process. And, okay. Okay. And the other part of this is when you have, you know, going back to what I said, how you form a belief, right? And get subconscious if you have emotional reactions. So there's a physical reaction every time have emotional reaction. If you think about when you slam the brakes on, on your car because you're going to yep. hit the yeah, your body wow. supports, I hope right? Not. Okay, I know. Yes. Right? <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know if that example. <laughs> Anyways, so, so your whole body is going to contort, right? You're going to make a face. You know, things are going to tighten up. So you have to have a physical element. I'm saying it's emotionally risky but there's a physical element to it. So we have all okay. of these reactions in our body as well, okay? Okay. And so you wanna be able to dig into it because you know, without knowing, I would say more about the situation too, it's like, I don't know all the reasons why you're an introvert. I don't know all the reasons why speaking is a big deal for you because there's other things tied up in that. So whatever is at the core of all of that, if you took care of that, then yeah, then absolutely it could be gone forever. There are things I don't do anymore that I don't even think about anymore. And I used to. So it can change. But again, you have to be able to get to the core beliefs and the patterns and there's a physical component. So when I tell people, like I tell people all the time, you gotta feel your feelings. And a lot of people are like, I don't know what that means. What do I, what do, I do with it? But if you literally have a reaction to anything, like I just said, Notice what your body's doing. Notice, mm. that, oh my God, my stomach is clenched up. So if you focus on the feeling and you just stick with the feeling, you're starting to connect to yourself, then you're, you're having a whole body experience and, and that's what you want because we all say, oh, I'm a whole person. Well, we are, but we've kind of taken pieces and parts of ourselves that don't work for us and stuck them in the back room. You know, that's what perfectionists do. It's like, nope, I don't like that about me. I'm going to put that back there. But in a sense, we're discarding ourselves and not bring all of who we are forward. And that's what you want to be able to do. That's why I'm like, well, I would have to know all the reasons why you're an introvert. Got it. Cool. I love it. It's super fascinating and interesting for me. So thank you for letting me pull on that thread a little bit. Um, now, you've got a book. You've got a book. As it, is it coming out or it's just out? Tell us about your book, what it's all about. Well, <laughs> my book is basically about being happy being you no matter what's going on, right? So it's it's basically called Deal With It, We're All F***ed Up. That's the title. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> and it's, eight, it's eight steps to happiness no matter what the f*** 
is going on. That's the subtitle for it. And it's not out yet. I'm writing it. I have a book proposal with my literary agent. And so hopefully it will be picked up by one of the publishers and put out there because I really feel like it's necessary. I think, again, this overdoing and overcompensating is a really painful way to live. And it causes a lot of people, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. And mm -hmm. it gets stuck. And to me, it's so much easier not to live that way. And I used to live this way. I speak from my experience and experience of working with people the last 11 years. So for people who are listening and love what you're saying, I, myself included, but the book is not going to be out for a while. Uh, what, like, what are you putting out? Resources, information. I mean, you have your show. I was on it. It's amazing. What, what should people, if they're curious, like, man, this Tracy woman, I love her. <laughs> what should they be doing next? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, our interview came out today, so it's out for everybody to see. And uh, secondly, if you go to my website, tracycrossley.com, you're going to see I have a podcast. I do it twice a week. I talk about all the stuff that I talked about today. Um, I have a 30-day video course, which is awesome. It will kick your ass. It's about uh, healthier relationships, meaning the relationship with yourself. And it will help, you know, to improve all areas of your life because you're basically digging into these things that stand in the way of you being happy. Happier people are more successful. They just are, you know, in terms of fulfilling. Let me put that, fulfilling. Like you can be right. a millionaire and you can be miserable. But if mm -hmm. you want fulfillment, it's a different story. So I would just go to my website, check that out. And then um, I offer coaching. I have coaches that coach. But... I seriously think if you listen to my podcast and you go for the course, that's a great place to start. So first off, I mean, I don't, I don't listen to podcasts, so I haven't listened to Tracy's, uh, but I love the questions that she asked because uh, I've been on a lot of podcasts, a lot, and, and Tracy asked some very unique and specific questions. And so I imagine if you're doing that to everybody in the show, it's a fire podcast. Uh, for, for the video series, I'm curious – what is it? Is it is it like every day for 30 days you send me something that's 10 minutes long and I have to do some homework on it? Or what's the process of your video course? I'm curious so, myself. Yeah. So basically you would just go sign up for it and then it's all on one website. You watch the video and like you said, probably about five, 10 minutes a day, depends on the day. You'll have stuff to download and read through and some of it's action based to begin with. There's always an action based part of it. Um, but there's also written parts, not every day. There's a couple meditations and, as I call them, emotional releases in there. Um, the feedback I've gotten from everybody taking it is that they feel like it's changed their life in some aspect, which is cool because, for me, like you, I don't want to put out a piece of crap. I want something that's going to actually help people. So right. it does, and I, I totally stand behind that. So 30 days, and what's the cost of it? Uh, the cost of it's three ninety five, three hundred ninety dollars mm -hmm. And um, you just pay, and you have a year to take it. But I don't suggest taking a year. And if you think you're going to take a year, I don't recommend taking it because you do want to keep at it. You want to make sure that you stay on top of it and you stay in it because it's a process. And by the end of the process, you're going to feel differently. And, and, it, and you want people taking consecutive action, like you should do 30 days in a row? You Is that the idea? Take, you can take a couple days off here and there, but for the most part, 30 days. 30 days to 45 days, I think, is a great time period. And that's what I've just observed from the people taking it. Um, you know, there are people that did it 30 days straight. But some of them felt like, especially on um, some of the exercises, you know, they're pretty deep. And so it might take you a day or two on a couple of them to really go, wow, I've got to really give this some thought or I've got to really sit with this. So right. I don't want people to shortchange their experience. Got it. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for making the time. I know we're right up against the clock. I appreciate it. And we're going to link up uh, for the YouTube side everything that uh, Tracy's talked about in the description. Any any final words or uh, advice or wisdom for the people who are watching? Don't be so hard on yourself. Enjoy your life and enjoy the process. I love it. Thank you so much, Tracy. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you. And thank you for having me on. I really enjoyed it, Evan. Cool. Appreciate the, the wisdom and advice for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take Thank care. Thank you. <laughs>
Take care. Bye. Bye. If you want to see my interview with Tom Bill, you check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. What are you doing? You're not answering the question I'm asking. I felt so hopeless and so lost and just unsure of how I was going to make anything in my life.